Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at negative pressure pulmonary edema, a possible complication of having an endotracheal tube in, and sometimes even not, such as in laryngospasm. So before we do this, we actually have to take a very quick look back at the basic mechanics of breathing and how it actually happens. So we should all understand that the actual act of breathing and moving air in and out of our lungs is a passive function. And I'm going to write that down, it is a passive function. Now we should also know, and I'm going to talk about this a lot, is pressure is equal to force over area. Remember, this is the concept of why it's not impressive to lay on a bed of nails, because a person's weight or their mass times their acceleration is distributed over a large area, thus making it so the pressure at any given point is very low. Now if you lay on a single nail, the area on which you're laying is very, very, very small, making the pressure very, 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 very high, and it'll impale you. So if we have two boxes, we'll call this box A, and we'll call this box B, and they both have 500 cc's of air in them, which of the two has the higher pressure? So obviously it's box A, because you're cramming the same amount of force into a smaller area. So here on the left we have our crude drawing of a pair of lungs with the bronchi and the trachea. Now on either side we're going to put these green lines and these are going to represent the chest wall. And then on the bottom here we're going to put the line into the bottom and this is going to be our diaphragm. And we'll just label it chest wall here and diaphragm here. Now when you take a deep breath your diaphragm contracts and it moves inferiorly from position A down to position B. So in our pressure equals force over area equation, we are increasing our area, thus decreasing our intrathoracic pressure. So this is what people refer to when they say you create negative pressure we're effectively turning box A here into box B. Now, it's going to come up in a lot of my lectures, but I'm convinced that a large amount of human physiology is actually a function of gradients and how we affect them and how we affect change in them. This case is no different. Without writing in any of the numbers, if you decrease the pressure in the intrathoracic cavity, that means the gradient or the difference in pressure from the atmosphere out here between and the thoracic pressure in here, if arbitrarily we'll say it was 50 before, has now increased the gradient, the difference, to 100. Therefore, the larger the gradient, the more movement we'll have. And so what happens is when you really increase that gradient and you open up the epiglottis and allow air to move, air moves down into the lungs to try and equalize that pressure by expanding it and equalizing the pressure in the intrathoracic cavity. So that's the basic mechanics of how we take a breath. And this is important to understand if we're going to take a look at what happens in negative pressure pulmonary edema. So I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this. Try a fresh start with uh, our lung drawing here. And in the meantime we're going to go ahead and describe we have a 25 year old patient and he's a young strong healthy individual okay and he's starting to wake up at the end of the case and you choose not to put a bite block in and he's been reversed he's starting to emerge and he's young and he's strong and what do young emergent patients do sometimes well they bite on the tube This occludes the airway, which means that air is unable to move down into the lungs because you've blocked it. I didn't draw a head or face, but you've effectively blocked it so that air can't go this way. And like we said before, you have this thoracic wall and you have your diaphragm here. Now, excluding the fact that occluding your 
airway is bad because you can't actually ventilate your patient, we're going to take a look here at what happens when you take a big deep breath. And for this, we're actually going to go ahead and zoom in here in the lungs in my beautiful, beautiful drawing. We're going to go ahead and see that if this here is an alveoli and we have a blood vessel wrapping around it, so the blue is the deoxygenated and then it's oxygenated and goes red. Now normally when we drop our diaphragm and we increase our intrathoracic pressure because pressure equals force over area and we dropped our area. I apologize, we increased our area. As we said before, air is able to move into the airway and into the lungs in order to equalize the pressure. Well, that's why the lungs expand. But now imagine we've blocked this off here. We've prevented air from entering in and equalizing this pressure. And your box is bigger now. Well, something has to equalize the pressure. Like we said before, anytime there's a gradient, nature is trying to make things equal. That's why water falls down a waterfall. So like we said, we now have an alveoli and there is a negative pressure in the intrathoracic cavity that's going out this way because the diaphragm dropped. Something has to enter into the alveoli in order to equalize that pressure going outward. And we've blocked our airway, so air can't move in to equalize that pressure. Well, because our alveoli are wrapped in these semi-permeable capillaries, which are obviously permeable under the right circumstances, that's why we have pulmonary edema when blood pressure, I apologize, when hydrostatic pressure increases and other things like that, it means that the blood vessels can actually leak into the alveoli. So this drop in intrathoracic pressure in the intrathoracic space leads to an increased transmural pressure across the capillaries, and this is then reconciled by influx of blood and fluid in the pulmonary capillaries into the alveoli and into the lung parenchyma in order to equalize the pressures. Now, as I mentioned before, this can occur anytime the airway is occluded and the, pa the patient creates negative pressure when they take a breath for themselves. So that can be a laryngospasm post-extubation and they take a big deep breath, or if they bite down on the tube and they take a big deep breath. Other less common causes include choking, so again, you're occluding your airway, or some types of laryngeal masses. But again, really anything that obstructs the airway when negative pressure is being created because air can't enter the lungs in order to equalize that pressure. So a couple of things, it should be noted, and they're pretty important. This can be life-threatening. So it's not to be taken lightly, as it can lead to ARDS and other complications, but it also may be minimal and self-limited. Obviously, the larger the breath the individual takes, the more fluid you're going to get in. Classic symptoms are going to be pink, frothy, pink, frothy, sputum, and desaturation. Auscultation will demonstrate wheezing and crackles, just like any other condition in which there is fluid in the lungs. Next, our treatment alleviate the blockage, which might mean deepening the patient so they're not biting on the tube or paralyzing them if they're laryngospasming. Second, get the fluid out. And this comes in the way of diuresis as well as positive pressure ventilation in order to help increase the pressure in the alveoli and thus force blood and fluid out of them and back into the capillaries. These are the mainstays treatment along with supportive care. I hope you all understand negative pressure pulmonary edema a little bit better. As always, if you have any questions or topics you would like covered, please feel free to contact us. Otherwise, check in for the next video.